30 years of yo-yo diets and man, have I learned some lessons. I get that they say that with age comes wisdom, but if I got the chance to start any part of my life over, I would definitely free myself from a lifetime of yo-yo dieting. And up until this past year, that's what I feel like my entire life has been. One big bout of losing a lot of weight only to regain it all back. But now that I'm feeling healthier than ever, and this time around I use a data-driven approach to weight loss rather than the typical emotional approach that most dieters follow, I finally feel at peace with food and I don't have any fear of regaining everything I lost. So let's get into it. My five best weight loss tips for beginners. The first tip is eating real food is the only way to win at weight loss long-term. As a seasoned dieter, I've tried every diet out there. LA Weight Loss, check. The lies, there you the go, lies. There you Jenny Craig, check. Weight Watcher, check. Slim Fast, check. You in danger, girl. And as hard as it was to stick to all of these popular diet plans, I always regained everything I lost within months. And that's because none of these diets promote what actually works long-term. None of these plans promote what your body actually needs. And that is real food. The packaged and processed foods these plants promote do nothing to help you feel satisfied, which means you'll only have the willpower to stick to these plants for so long before you cave and binge on anything that you can stuff into your face. But what about the current popular plans like low carb or even keto? These plants promote real food, right? Well, they do, or at least they're supposed to. And that's why so many people have so much success because they're finally eating real food. But once food marketers found out how popular these diets were, out came all of the keto-friendly products, which are marketed to make your keto diet easier to follow. But in reality, most of these products are just expensive junk food in disguise that will still lead most people to overeat, aka experience stalled progress and weight regain. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you have to follow a very strict whole food diet forever, and any little slip up that you have means that you automatically regain everything you work so hard to lose. The good news is that if you follow a plan where you count your macros, you can still find room for some of your favorite treats. You'll just no longer be eating these treats in place of meals. My second best tip for new dieters is protein is your best friend. Even though every diet guru has a different story about why their diet is better, after following most of the diets in existence, I can tell you that eating protein early and often is the best strategy to lose weight and finally keep it off. And while there are so many reasons to follow a high protein plan, one reason is the more protein you eat, the less muscle you risk losing. In fact, studies have shown that even if you don't incorporate any resistance training, who does that? As long as you keep protein high, you have a better chance of losing less muscle during your weight loss diet. While I'm willing to bet that you don't have looking like the Incredible Hulk on your mood board, you still wanna hold on to as much muscle as you can so your metabolism remains strong. Eating more protein will also help you feel more satiated, which means you won't have to deal with annoying hunger pains that most dieters do their best to ignore. While a lot of experts recommend eating at least 30 grams of protein per meal, shooting even higher is better. And that's because you wanna eat at least your target weight in protein each day. And if you only eat 30 grams of protein per meal and you eat three meals per day, that's only 90 grams of protein, which is much lower than most women's goal weight. But if you shoot for somewhere like 50 grams of protein per meal, then you'll be closer to the 150 gram per day range. And if you fall short on a meal every so often, it's not really that big of a deal. My third best fat loss tips for beginners is yes, movement matters, but please don't kill yourself with cardio. If your fat loss plan consists of drastically slashing calories while adding in as much intense cardio as you can handle, I can tell you from experience, that's a losing plan and I don't mean losing fat. True, you may lose a little more weight at the beginning of a plan like this, but eventually you will stall out and then you'll have nowhere to go but right back up. Even after more than 30 years on the yo-yo dieting hamster wheel, I still made this mistake when I was restarting my plan. Since I'm one of those rare creatures who actually enjoys cardio, I thought that I could just pedal all of the fat off on the elliptical. But after a few months of pedaling nowhere fast, I stumbled across some videos on YouTube, which ironically I was watching while doing cardio, that told me to quit cardio for fat loss. As I dug deeper down the rabbit hole, I learned that all of the cardio was just tiring me out and making me hungrier. So even though I was moving more during my cardio session, I was moving way less later in the day. And neat movement is not only important when it comes to ditching your sedentary lifestyle, but it's also the kind of movement that doesn't stimulate your appetite. So even though I quit formal cardio for fat loss, movement in the form of walking or even more productive movement like cleaning my house is still important in order to boost your overall metabolism. 
Instead of counting calories burned on a cardio machine, I switched things up and began tracking daily steps. Since I have the energy to move way more often throughout the day when I don't kill myself on the cardio machines, my fat loss progress became much smoother and I've ditched a sedentary lifestyle for good in favor of activities I enjoy or ones I need to get done anyway. My fourth weight loss tip for beginners is to start weight training on day one. Or if you're already past day one, then start now. No, seriously, drop and give me 20. I'll wait. Heck, I'll even do them with you. Okay, as we talked about, cardio can and will burn more calories in the moment, but overdoing cardio for fat loss is short-term thinking. And that's because as soon as you're done killing yourself on the cardio machine, your calorie burn is over at least until the next time you kill yourself with cardio. Building muscle, on the other hand, is a long-term investment in your health and your metabolism. Even though you don't burn as many calories during a resistance training session, the more muscle you build, the more calories your body burns at rest. This puts building lean muscle as one of the best ways to keep your metabolism higher as you diet. And since your main goal should be to keep calories as high as possible whenever you're trying to lose fat, building a stronger metabolism is so important. Now, if you're afraid of morphing into the Incredible Hulk, don't be. Women who have a lot of muscle put a lot of time and effort into their bodies. I've been lifting consistently for over a year, and I'm not tearing off my button-down shirt anytime soon. If you're ready to start a lifting program, but you're not sure where to start, research a good trainer in your area to help you get started. Or since sometimes good trainers are hard to come by, you could even invest in a beginner's program like this one from the guys at Mind Pump. I saved my fifth tip for last because if you are new to a weight loss journey, I promise that you don't want to hear this, but that's exactly why you need to hear this. And that tip is slow and steady wins the fat loss race, which means you need to throw all of the plans you've found that promise you'll lose 20 pounds in the next month in the trash, because that's exactly what these plans are trash. Unless you have a lot of weight to lose and you've never really dieted before, it is virtually impossible to lose 20 pounds of fat in a month. And most women would be so much better off if instead of rushing the process with a goal to lose 20 pounds as quickly as you can, that you actually took your time and learned how your metabolism works and that you aim for a more realistic goal, like maybe losing five pounds in a month. And while losing five pounds per month isn't what you want to hear, <gasps> that's a rate where most women can reasonably lose fat while still holding on to their muscle which means that you're more likely to keep the weight off once your diet ends. And if you are one of those women who poo-poo only losing five pounds in a month, you probably have no idea what five pounds even looks like. Here's five pounds of the fat that you could consistently lose month after month if you just slowed down and took your time. Going slower also means that you're taking the time to learn the real habits that you'll need in place for a lifetime of steady progress instead of constantly starting from scratch. So even though your brother's mother's sister just lost 50 pounds on the latest fad diet, that doesn't mean that you should rush out and learn all of the diet rules she followed. In fact, by the time you finally get the diet down, your brother's mother's sister, your aunt, why don't I just shorten this and call her your aunt, she probably already regained at least half of what she lost. And that's because the latest fad diets will never work for long-term fat loss. Trust me, I'm an expert in fad diets with over 30 years of experience. But do you know what does work? Having patience, learning about how your metabolism actually works and having a whole lot of patience. So far, it's taken me 14 months to lose around 40 pounds of fat while gaining somewhere between five to 10 pounds of muscle. Do you think when I started 14 months ago that I wanted to spend an entire 14 months on a diet plan that I'm not even finished with yet? Nope, but that's just how long sustainable weight loss can take. In fact, while you're over here poo-pooing only losing five pounds per month, looking back at my weight loss data, I was only losing two to three pounds most months. But after taking my time this time around, guess what's not happening? I'm not regaining everything I lost and then some because this time I learned how my metabolism works and I took the time to track and measure my progress along the way. So now if I wanna lose a quick five pounds, I've got my own personalized data to tell me exactly what I need to do. And I'm 100% prepared to do it all the right way because losing weight sucks enough the first time around. And quite frankly, I'm too old to be on a starvation diet all of the time or even for a day at this point. So there's the five tips that I would tell a 12 year old Nissa to follow so I only had to lose the weight one time. Instead, I had to keep relearning the same lessons over and over for 30 years. And I don't want the same for you. 
If you want to learn the number one habit that changed my life when it comes to a sustainable weight loss plan, check out this video next.